Hey guys, my name is Juan Amigo Gomez. I'm a software engineer or computer scientist from Spain. I live in the Canary Islands. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. The link is on the slide, as you can see. And then I also have an Instagram, which is only for art related stuff. And of course, there is a link for Nymph, the name for UE project, which is the subject matter for this presentation at uh, the NINCONF 2022. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. So, this is the agenda for today. I will talk a little bit about uh, why name for UE and then introduction and introduce one of the key components of it which is the real reflection system then i want to talk a little bit about the info for ue dsl do do a quick demo which i guess is the most interesting part of the whole talk and then talk a little bit about the next steps and the and the future I would also like uh, to talk about uh, the, all the issues and problems that we face, like speed up the CPP compilation. Obviously, Unreal is a huge project and has thousands of headers. Um, and we needed to use PCH, and I think uh, not many NIM developers know about, about that one. And then we did a few tricks to also speed up the NIM compilation. There is more work that needs to be done. But yeah, there are a lot of workarounds that we have to do in order to get the, the plugin working. Um, and I think it would be wonderful to do just a talk about them. I had to um, just don't, don't mention them in this in this talk because it it will take too much time because there were many um, many specific workarounds that we had to do. Okay, so yeah, the the why why would you choose Unreal Engine, right? Especially from from an indie perspective, it is true that Unreal Engine has like a really step. Uh, learning curve, but in my opinion is totally worth it. Um, they have a lot of uh, unique engine features like Nanite, Lumen, the Paddle Test, Neural Capability. Um, it is also open source, which is, uh, which is huge, right? If it weren't open source, we couldn't do the plugin at all because we really need to dig into the the core um, and tweak tweak uh, the plugin in a way that it fits perfectly with it. And then, yeah, the tooling. The tools are are amazing. The animation blueprints, the contour rig, all the animation tools are are really great. I, I didn't see any of the engine that at least that is public that has those uh, specifically quality, quality tools, right? The Niagara particle system, the material editor, meta sounds, and the blueprint itself. Uh, they, they are fantastic, right? <coughs> Why NIM? Well, NIM has, I mean, if, if you are watching this talk, probably you came, it's, it's because the NIM comes, right? And, you should already know why name, but just in case. Uh, the native performance, if, if you're doing a game, you want it to run as fast uh, as it can be. So uh, there is no runtime overhead there. The clean Python-like syntax. The time system, which in my opinion has a few flaws, even though it's, it's fantastic, it's much better of your average uh, type system, things like um, generic and, um, and concepts are really great. The macro system, it, it, for me, is like the first time that I encounter a, um, a macro system that it's also on a statically check uh, language. And 
in my opinion, it opens a lot of possibilities. Um, yeah, and then of course the CPP interrupt. Without it, uh, the plugin probably couldn't be possible. It may worth mentioning that I took a look at doing it first on Rust, um, but the CPP interrupt was so poor that the integration will always uh, lag. Also, I mean, the, the semantics are totally different from, from CPP. Okay, so why mean for UE, right? <sighs> so f first point is like the CPP is noise, it's a noise language and, and, and bloat itself, but the unreal CPP is <laughs> horrible. They have they have like um, a tool called Unreal Header Tool that preprocess all the headers, um, output uh, CPP code. So it's like they are compiling twice um, the CPPs, and the outcome is great. The the reflection system we will be talking about a little bit uh, of it uh, in the next slide. But uh, it really bloats your code because it forces you to to have separated headers and CPP files, and then you have a lot of macros, or you have to use a lot of macros to indicate the reflection system how to, on the Unreal header tool how to process them in a way that makes sense for what you're doing. So yeah, it gets really, really bloat. Another of the advantage of Nim4U is that uh, we wanted to have uh, home reloading. Uh, we are starting the, the project on Unreal 4.2017, which, uh, which didn't have full support for right coding. You only could change uh, the CPP files, but not the headers. Now they are improving right coding. Um, it's not perfect, but it's, it works pretty well, especially for being CPP. Um, but yeah, one of the, of, of the key components of Nim4UE, or what we are aiming to, is to have a short feedback loop. Um, and we kind of achieve that by doing uh, DLL swapping, um, which allows you to keep coding in the editor without restarting the editor. Because again, um, in previous version of Unreal, even sometimes now, you have to restart the editor to see the changes of your code reflected in the editor, right? That's a problem because it's, it's such a big project that it takes, uh, it takes a while to, to, to start up, right? Another thing that is important in, in, in Nim4UE is and to take in mind is that this is not like um, FFII plugin where you uh, push um, or you pull from CPP Nim code and you use it um, in a way that is kind of isolated. This is more like a fusion between uh, Nim, CPP and Blueprint, right? This, the, the, the project or, or, or Nymphoe sits right between CPP and Blueprint and you can use a CPP in Nim and then you can use Nim in Blueprint. Uh, from the Blueprint perspective, it's just like if you were um, using CPP instead of, of Nim. Blueprint doesn't know anything about Nim. And that makes it great because that's uh, the workflow that uh, a real developer expects and the whole engine is built under that premise that you have a mix between Blueprints and CPP. So in this case, you will have a, mean, uh, 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 a mix between Blueprint and Nim and maybe sometimes CPP2, if that makes sense. So another thing that uh, we really want it to be is to feel natural for those that are seasoned and real developers and also for the ones that come from NIM. Obviously, there are some things that uh, 
can that can flow naturally between them and in those cases we 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 choose to do it like in the unreal way of doing things but the whole point of this is you don't have to relearn everything um, there are plugins out there that uh, kind of change the name of things and introduce their own um, subjective way of doing things um, and I think that complicates the learning curve for the ones that already know uh, Unreal Engine. Another, th another thing worth mentioning is that uh, there is no engine modification for using the plugin, which means you can just use uh, whatever version of Unreal you want. If you want to be like in the cutting edge uh, master branch of, of Unreal, you can do so. If you want to be behind the, for some reason, the um, current branch or current version of Unreal, you can also do so. Of course, the, the plugin, the minimum version right now is 5.0, uh, but probably we will keep supporting it if it isn't too much hassle when we move forward. We will see. So the Unreal Reflection System, as I said before, is produced by the Unreal Healer tool, which uh, preprocess these headers and create a generated file with all the metadata necessary that on the second compilation um, it will be added into, into memory, right? So here, for example, uh, we're thinking um, how you would um, declare a class in this case um, a character which a character is um, an actor that is uh, specifically meant to be used as a player character or well, just any type of character really um, this is exposed on the game framework from the engine itself um, as uh, you can see here um, these two properties are like field from for the class um, it is all 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 of this generated body your class your properties and so on are macros that introduce or hints the um, unreal header tool that you want to specify this metadata into those right um the, when when you open the editor and use you open like the asset which is called a blueprint by the way the blueprint many people think is about the event graph which is the visual programming stuff but it's not just that um, they also hold the archetype of the of the of the class in memory so yeah the, the, there is the event graph component to it, the visual programming language, but there is also this archetype um, on the on the on the blueprint. Other engines call it uh, prefab, like Unity, for example, right? So, as you can see here, the for example, the U Spring R component or the U Camera component are are specified here through, I mean, are projected here on the archetype of this uh, anim for ue demo character um, as component. There are other components because uh, we are inheriting from a character, but this is the, the idea, right? And then the camera itself has like this exposed properties to uh, crouch a, a height and base a height and so on, and you can, um, change them as hockey here without changing the code which is which is nice and expect right for now an engine to have this functionality you can also define functions um, like for example this follow camera is the the variable here and it has a, a get camera view function uh, that uh, takes a delta time parameter and outputs an extract of desired view um, there is no a function definition on this code snippet, but the macro is just your function. 
I talking about this because this is how we decide to bind uh, the Unreal API instead of manually bind every single CPP file. Um, we bind the whole API using the real reflection system or taking advantage of it, which saves us a ton of work. Of course, there are a lot of base classes that are bind manually, and if you want to bind something specifically manually to, through the CPP, you can too. But yeah, we took advantage of it because also Blueprint uses it. And even the Python binding that you can use for um, scripting the editor, not for making game, but for scripting the editor in Unreal Engine uses the reflection system as an um, interrupt mechanism. So we took full advantage of that instead of, again, binding everything by hand, right? Okay. So the, this is the, the name for UV DSL that we introduced. Um, it has um, a specification for all major type definition that you can do in Unreal, delegate functions, tracks, and classes. Here, for example, we have a delegate um, and a U class, and then a bunch of functions, right? Um, if you recall before, for every single U property, you have to specify all the metadata that you want. Um, in our DSL, you can just uh, do it once. Um, um, and then everything that is within that block will take those meta of if they were um, for them, right? Because they are. Um, as you can see here, for example, the delegate is uh, also a uprop, a bit different, which has this blueprint assignable, so you have to, you, you, we created another block here, and yeah, this is kind of straightforward. We introduce also um, a way to specify the default values to every single type, and also a way to access the instant of, of, of I mean, this, all of this is uh, the ferrer into the constructor. So when the constructor, when the object is created, um, it will assign this value to the, to the constructor of the actor that is, yeah, that being an in-test actor, right? And then the same applies for function. You can just write, um, any new regular function here, and you will be able to um, write new code. As long as they, they are in a ufunc block, they will be created as ufunc, um, ufunction functions that uh, you can use um, in, in Blueprint too. Uh, we will see an example of that later on. So we support static functions, uh, we support um, reflected virtual functions, which are functions that are already defined in the base class and you can override through name, like for example, this begin play or, or tick uh, that we are seeing here. This is something that is defined on the actor base class. And we are overriding it here. And yeah, there are a lot of um, things that we support and also a few things that we still need to support. But, but yeah, this is essentially the, the DSL for defining a um, new U-class. Right? Um, this is the big scheme of thing how, how, how we interrupt with the reflection system. So we have this concept of UE type which holds the information of um, um, a real engine type, which again can be a function, um, sorry, a delegate, a struct, an enum, or, or a class. Uh, what we do is, is we pull the Unreal Reflection um, API, like they are separated in modules, so we pull each module and we generate 
new code in a way that you can use it, use the function from Nim. Um, we, are, we don't have time to go into the internals, but um, we essentially are passing like pointers around so we can be a f we can be fast enough right there is not too much overhead between the calls um, and also we do push the types when it makes sense to the reflection system um, and again we generate back the information to be consumed from NIM. So it's like um, a loop here for, for, for when we emit those types. We, we call the, the consumption of the Unreal Reflection system generate, to generation like gen types, right? And the push to the Unreal Reflection system, the emission of types, right? Emit types. So the DSL basically is transformed into these UE types and these UE types uh, on one hand um, pushes, like emits type information, and we also generate uh, the type, the NIM type information, so you can use those classes from, from NIM. And that's it, uh, let's go jump into the, into the demo. Uh, so the demo is basically um, a quick um, point-click-like uh, RPG, RPG where you can just uh, move around and pick objects uh, and yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Okay, uh, you have like an inventory, um, I will show you now the we can expect it. Uh, the name part is just that, the character and the pickable objects with the um, with the items, right? So how this works. Um, I won't be stopping too much on the details, uh, but essentially here we have uh, a U class with inherit from U dataset, which is like uh, Specific, um, a specific specific uh, U object la that allows you to create like assets with uh, data. Um, this is equivalent for those familiar with Unity with scriptable objects, I think they call. So you can create instance of those by going into miscellaneous uh, data sets and then they appear here, right? Item. I have to. I have like a gem, which is actually a broccoli and a potion. Um, yeah, if I open it, uh, let me bring this window here. Uh, you will see that it has like an, an icon, which is a pointer to a texture, a name, a description, and a static mesh, which is what is being represented here. But you can't drop it in, into, into the screen because it isn't um, an actual. Uh, we're going to see now why this is. Um, it's possible to, to drag this into, into an actor, right? So, yeah. <coughs> we, then we have like um, uh, an inventory component. Um, an inventory is uh, a component is anything that can be attached into an actor. Um, in this case, um, it just has like an array of inventory items, which is a uh, US track, which contains a pointer to an item, and then the quantity of them. This is not exposed to blueprint. It's just uh, in the name side of things. Mm, it is being pushed to Unreal though, because um, if you don't want the garbage collector of Unreal to, to clean your items, uh, you need to mark them as a uh, prop, right? Uh, we are doing that here. So we, we so it has like a, a reference to it. And then the inventory has a function here, which is add an item, an item to the to the um, to the inventory right here. 
essentially what we do is uh, we check if the itinerary exists if it exists we increase the quantity if it is doesn't we just uh, add it to the existing items uh, yeah. then this is the pickup um, we are going to skip it for now um, because here we have our actor which inherit from character as the one where we saw before in the slides um, it has uh, besides the the properties that an actor has it also has um, an inventory so let me bring it here on the screen so we can see uh, it's this guy from here, I think. Yeah, you can see it says native parent class nincon character, right? So if I open it here, um, it's this guy from here. Uh, as you can see here, it has um, the inventory component that we just initialized here. Um, the inventory has items that appear here, right? Um, as you can see here, but we are not adding them manually and just for the sake of showing you how you can use Blueprint with Nim um, if you look at this, let me see if I can get rid of this guy here yeah, we are calling the, uh, the inventory, you can drag it from here and it will become a variable, right? because we have the um, we have here the blueprint read and write so this means that you can read and modify the property from blueprint and then it has a function uh, which is an item right that we are calling here add item right um, yeah you can choose uh, one of the data sets to, to add it to the inventory so we call it three times with two functions uh, one gym or broccoli right uh, yeah, this is pretty much um, our um, actor interacting with our main actor interacting with blueprints. And then, if we look at this, at uh, the game running, and we select uh, the character and we put the output log, let me clean, clean it so we can see. So, yeah, the actor, um, we can move it uh, and play with it. That, that's, that's already. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, the movement is in code into the player controller. We are not going into it right now. I just wanted to, to show you, let me clean the log, um, this function from here, there is a meta that you can specify that what it will do is just to uh, call you logs, items, uh, and print out all of the items that we have. And if you remember when we, um, see the, the event graph uh, on begin play we were adding three items to this guy so yeah uh, as you can see here uh, it's been print out uh, an array of items right um, and yeah one gym and two pop so if we have uh, go ahead and pick another item you will see now that we have uh, two here right Okay, so the the pickup balls are here, right? Mm, they essentially has a pointer to an item, and then um, a function which is pickup item, which accepts uh, an inventory component, and then. It adds the item to the inventory, so it calls the add item function here, and then it destroys the actor. So that's why when we pick it, it disappears. Uh, you, you won't do this um, in a in a regular game. You will just um, allows the blueprint or whatever to display some cosmetic effects, and then maybe after that destroy the actor. That just for the sake of this presentation, uh, this is good enough for now so um, then on the user script uh, this is a user construction script this is like a constructor that is called every time that you move the over object around the world or change a variable or something 
what we do if if the item is not null and the mesh of the item is not null neither we just um, set the mesh of the item of the pickup as the mesh that is hold in in the item right and then if any of those is false uh, we just um, set no mesh set for pickup we print out uh, a warning right okay so this allows us to for example if i change here the item for a potion it change here automatically right um this blueprint it's like um in, it inherits from from the for our um a pickup which uh, inherit from a static mesh actor by the way the, the only thing that it has is like a mesh component which is available for us here we are calling it right and then we added to it like a fair collision on the blueprint so it's like easier for us to see um the blueprint interaction interaction this is post uh begin overlap um, function um or delegate uh, which by the way we can create those in info ue too um and then what we do is we check if 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 our actor is the one that we collide with from the pickup perspective is uh, an inf core character if it is then we pick the inventory and we just call this function right it pick up item which live uh, inside the um, um, in name right which is the one that i just saw you we pass the inventory and we add it to the item so afterwards it will get destroyed Uh, right, so yeah, you can see here the, the item. If I change it for potion, for example, it changed. So that's as you expect it to be, right? And yeah, uh, what else? Of course, you can have uh, whole loading. Um, let me show you, for example, in real time. Um, I have the function here prepare for you. So if I put this function here, which essentially will um, it, it has to be another block because we don't want calling editor uh, on tick, right? And essentially this is overriding a base tick function, and then it will be printing into the log. Let me compile this while I talk. It will be printing into the log um, essentially the same that we have uh, on the logs are all items right um, it just has some default parameters and then yeah so I think it should be up now yeah as you can see here we are now seeing the items we didn't have to restore the editor or anything uh, yeah, and we can pick those items. Uh, it also increases our um, amount or quantity of item. So this is pretty much it for the demo. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to go too much into details. Um, hopefully, we will be having a few examples or templates once the plugin is in a state where it can be used uh, without uh, too much hassle. There are still a few things to, to fix uh, before releasing it, but yeah, it's we're getting done. All right. The short term roadmap. Uh, one thing that we want to do is to attempt to do a small game first to start fixing uh, the small bugs that we have. Um, just by doing this quick demo, um, I was able to fix and improve some some corners that we have to polish before continuing. And then we need to support all the metas. That should be kind of 
easy, but uh, that implies, for example, to have a network support, replication, and all of that within NIM, which will be fantastic. We also need to work on building the binaries without the editor. Right now we are using the editor headers and they are a bit different and produce a different uh, binary. So we have to work on that too. We also would like to have macOS parity. Mac right now is lacking a little bit behind. For example, we are not generating all the Unreal Engine bindings to a Mac because we needed to do some specific workarounds in Windows and then we had to reevaluate and apply those in Mac too. Um, we would also like to add the game entry point so it will speed up compilation times. This means that having like another DLL specifically for the game separated from the plugin, hopefully it will reduce uh, compilation time to about four to five seconds. Right now it's about eight to ten, depending on what you compile. Of course, it can be much more if you compile something really deep into the plugin. But yeah, our, our aim is to have it between below ten seconds. I think that that fast enough for now. And then for being able to reach V1. Uh, we would like to have support for iOS and Android. iOS may be painful because um, iOS only supports static libraries and I don't know if we are going to face some problems with that. Probably we will, <laughs> but hopefully we are going to be able to sort them out. Then we need to automatize the Unreal Build Tool workflow. Um, Right now we have to do some manual uh, tweaking, like setting um, the plugin path. Um, we we'll probably need to set the game path um, and the platform and the target. So hopefully we'll be, be able to uh, pull that automatically. We are also considering doing a Discord channel once we reach uh, V1 or probably before V1 um, when, once we have some sample for the community to play with and for the long term oops, for the long term we would like to see to explore the integration of NIM script so we can have even faster compilation times but maybe only for functions and small things because NIM script is not really fast but it can be also as a tool for quick prototyping, right? And to test ideas out. Uh, if that works, we may consider to introduce a report, which is more of the previous point, right? <laughs> uh, we also like to expose the whole editor API so you can create custom windows and widgets for, for the editor itself. There should be some support now everything that you will be able to do in blueprints you can do in NIM automatically at least when v1 is out but uh, there are a lot of apis that are not exposed into into the reflection system like creating custom viewports or messing up with the skeletal meshes uh, uh, a, lot, a lot of editor apis so we would like to bind those manually uh, because they are pure CPP. But before that, we have to see if we can deal with virtual functions because um, the Unreal Editor API relies a lot on, on those. We have a few ideas of how to tackle virtual functions but since they are not support uh, by default in NIM, we may need to do a few workarounds there. And another thing that we also uh, would like to have is a custom VS Code extension uh, for the plugin and potentially for, for NIM too. Yeah. So thank you if you made it that far for watching the talk hope you like it
Um, and yeah, I would also like to thank uh, the NIN community for being helpful, in particular to, to Don Aka Geek Relief, which has been really pushing uh, for nim for ue um, without him uh, the project wouldn't be possible and of course uh, i would like to thank also you for for, for watching uh, the talk bye